<laughs> Guys in the Gulf. How does that sound in your in yeah. your headphones there? You sound yep. alright? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Good cool. to go. Comfortable? I think so. I'll just have to freak out. <laughs> Jeez, don't start now. Anthony. <laughs> oh, I like we've got a chip here, mate. Yeah. There you go. All good, mate. What are we, episode 13 now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't even know now. It was the last one was uh, a two-parter. Yep. Yep, with Trent. Oh. Yeah, which is pretty I'm feeling good. a bit better uh, today than I was. Well, actually, a little bit better. <laughs> was a bit bloody uh, dusted last time after a big night <laughs> of... Uh, with mullet again. <laughs> again. <laughs> so, Anthony, welcome to the table, mate. Guys in the Gulf. Um, yeah, what brings you to King Ash Bay, mate? What the, tell us about the first, how do you, how do you find out about the place? Um, initially, I think I just seen it on the map, to be honest. Um, a few years ago now, I was just on the road traveling around and I'd spoken to a few, few people that had sort of been here before and, you know, just heard a basic fishing story here and there but um yeah just pretty much traveled into town blind and nearly traveled out of town blind too <laughs> <laughs> that happens to a few, that happens to a few people <laughs> uh, we, what's, we, with we your vo what's with the voice mate you sound like you've been screaming at reba mcintyre or something oh <laughs> mate yeah well we just had the super bowl so you boys are there for that yeah and, um, yeah, we put a few bets on because we don't normally watch the NFL, obviously, so we had a few bets on. I um, had 100 bucks on uh, on the anthem to see how, how long it would go. And I bet under, after doing hours of research, <laughs> thought there's no way she's going to go over, not a chance. And then, uh, yes, Reba the Red Devil, mate, she bloody mm. sung, the, uh, in, sung the anthem incorrectly, I think. She added, uh, or the, sang the, the last brave, two. yeah, yeah twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she said the brave twice. So there's a bit of controversy around that, actually. Uh, I don't know if you see the guys... Um, they bet ten thousand on Chris Stapleton last yeah. year and missed out by like one hundredth of a second, and so they had ten grand on her again this year and um, ought to go under and uh, yeah again missed out because of a, a stuff up so it's a bit bit controversial I think, but yeah it was you good fun though. Burnt all her old CDs and yeah 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 so <laughs> uh, yeah disclaimer no uh, Reba McIntyre songs are to go on the on the playlist mate <laughs> <That's it. laughs> getting rid of Reba. <laughs> The lights went out in Borrowola <laughs> instead of Georgia. <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's very disappointing, Reba, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good game, though. Yeah, very close game. Yeah, uh, we got to see Taylor, too, which was exciting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, about 70, Lo Longest game points. ever, too, wasn't it? Yeah, well, long, longest Super Bowl ever. Longest one I've said. ever watched, yeah. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the longest one all of us have yeah, watched, yeah. about five hours, I reckon, in total. So uh, luckily we had plenty of beers on. Started with about uh, two six packs in the fridge and ended up drinking about three cartons. I reckon by the end of it. <laughs> I was a good boy. Oh, you were. So you didn't do didn't do much drinking at all, mate? Did you? you yeah. didn't even, I don't think you had a beer. Not during the game, no. No, it did start at nine o'clock though, or something. So eight thirty <laughs> or something. So, so uh, yeah, no, it was uh, good fun though. Actually, it was interesting uh, being a close game and then yeah having a few bets on it and that as well. And and um, yeah, so it was pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, one Australian boy in there. So, um, oh yeah, the punter for the 49ers. The, the team that lost, yeah. Yeah, mm. yep. So um, yeah, had a bet on him for uh, MVP. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Paid three hundred fifty to one or something. Like yeah, that. I, I wouldn't think a punter's ever. I don't, I don't <laughs> ever think so. Won mate, no. MVP. No, no, no. I think it was pretty much the the biggest margin on the on the spread. So yeah. <laughs> mm. But yeah, out of all the bets, mate, made uh, made about a hundred bucks, I reckon, over the course of the day. Yeah. With them winning with three seconds to go. Oh man. Oh. Yeah, it was down to the wire for sure. Mm. Yeah. Extra yeah. time. Yeah, extra time. Yeah, played uh, a full another quarter basically. Yeah. So, um, so that was good fun. And uh, what else we do? We um, got some lobster out of the freezer, mate. We tried lobster for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I um, I might have tried it once when I was a kid, but that yeah, I've sort of been around seafood all my life. But um, yeah, probably because uh, not too many lobster around yeah. Queensland, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, well, it's come from... Um, Down south, you were saying, eh? Yeah, yeah, from uh, Port Lincoln. Um, Pete that's uh, just moved up here, brought a couple up for us so yeah. to try. So, uh, no, it was bloody excellent. Got got amongst that and, um, yeah, and, uh, well, Mullet was supposed to come over too, but he never never turned up, did he? Mm. What did we do with Mullet? We, oh, we went out for a drive with Mullet after that because we did speak. We were going to go chase some cherubin and that's that. That's right. So. We, um, <laughs> we ended up going... Long story. <laughs> another, yeah. another Mullet mission, but... Um, <laughs> 
So, um, no, actually, I think that – was that the day we mucked around with a prop off the boat after that? Um, I'm trying to think now whether it was or not. Too yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that's why we launched the boat. Yeah, oh, no, no, in... but then when we checked the – Yeah, we did it. Oh, it was a different day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we went um, – yeah, went down after the after the Super Bowl because it finished lunchtime, a bit after lunchtime or whatever. Mm. And um, we well and truly had a few beers, so we uh, mm. went and had a bit of a play downstairs. And I had a um, couple of props there that are um, pretty worn out from working in the shallows, and and you know a fair bit about <coughs> um, excuse me, you right, you know a fair bit about um, props and stuff like that. And um, you used to do a bit of boat race and stuff back in the day, so you um, had a look and. Just uh, offered to have a play with mine, see if you could get a bit more life out of it. Well, firstly, I asked you whether it was destroyed and no good in, <laughs> before I started playing. But, yeah. No, um, yeah, done a bit of racing back in the day so and used to uh, do most of the prop work ourselves um, in the end once we sort of got our head around it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, no enough to get myself into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, we just put a bit of cup on them and because obviously when you're dredging all the time yeah you know picking the pots up uh yeah you're wearing the diameter down um which will give you more revs but it doesn't give you any grip so yeah um till they pretty much get to a stage where they're pretty much buggered you know yeah so uh yeah just by putting a bit of cup on it um we used to do that because i used to race in the um in the surf yeah in the white water and um yeah learnt that pretty pretty quickly that if you you hit the accelerator you'll just get neutral it doesn't grip so yeah yeah so um, cavitates cavitates yep that's it and so by putting that cup on there and uh we took it for a strap and i think you're pretty impressed yeah no really good really good well because you're spending like you know on that engine there i'm spending maybe about 1500 bucks on a prop on a stainless prop Mm. and like you wear through you know four or five on depending where whereabouts you're working um but you know you could be four or five props a year you go through mm. um not from hitting anything but literally just from uh being in the sand and the shallow mud and stuff and um yeah they basically they just slowly lose traction over time you get so you lose fuel economy and you lose a bit of speed and the biggest thing is especially being heavy you lose that um, that power to get out of the hole, that, that initial thrust. Yeah. And um, so you've got to replace it by a new one. And the old one, you know, it doesn't really even look like there's anything physically wrong with it, but it is just worn out a bit. And mm. so, yeah, basically you, you took that one off and, and played around with it for us and put a bit more cupping back on it. And um, and only, like, you'd be amazed, that, that like, like I was amazed how little, yeah. um, uh, like, work sort of thing went into it. Like, it's all obviously a lot of knowledge, but... Like it wasn't hours of work or anything like that. It was uh, no, it's just, just knowing exactly what to do. Exactly that. It's just um, the right thing in the right spot. And, yeah, you can you can bugger one up pretty quick I too. was going to ask that. Yeah. Can you overdo it? Can yeah, you, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what would happen if you overcupped it or whatever? Um, it, it'll it sort of knock off a lot of speed. Um, you can get them quite unbalanced as well. So it'll oh, give you yeah. a vibration. Um, but, yeah, it's just... So um, we're not recommending kids go out there and take the... Take the prop off Dad's uh, <laughs> <laughs> 150. No, 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 no. <laughs> nah, probably not. Nah. No, no, no. No, no, no I don't think I'd do, I'd do it, mate. I'll just save him up for when Ed comes for a yeah. visit <laughs> and uh, shout him a few beers or something, <laughs> mate. Um, but, yeah, it made a massive difference. Like, we, we put the boat in to go and give it a try and, like, straight away noticed the difference. Like, because um, normally checking crab pots, as you know, like, we're going, you know, you've got 90 pots to check and you're going full lock all the time in the shallow water and when the as soon as the props you know a few weeks old you've got to start straightening the the boat up uh, straight straightening the wheel up to get up onto the plane yeah whereas like ideally you want to still be in full lock and start feeding the power on and then you know it's all about efficiency obviously and you, you just can't do that with a worn prop but you know i went full lock with um with that one like pretty well straight away yeah. and um and fed it and just yeah just nearly streaming out the back of the boat. I was like, it was like having a brand new prop again. So obviously you would still lose a little bit of that top end, maybe, maybe a little, a little bit of efficiency, but it's still much better than spending another $1,500 on a new prop and throwing that one out. Yeah. You probably, you'd, you'd have to do the, you know, do, do some, um, research, um, oh, testing and testing stuff over and time. that over time, but, um, not necessarily you will lose top speed. Yeah. Um, you could even gain some. Yeah. Um, 
the, that's the other that's the other thing that it can do you're actually technically in, increasing the pitch as the water leaves the face of the blade yep um so yeah technically like a 17 can be 17 and a half 18 pitch yeah by the time the water's leaving that that leading edge you know yeah so what sort of boats we like you said you were racing in the surf what what's pit, what sort of boat are we looking at uh so they they're called thundercats oh um, like a inflatable yeah, so inflatable um, PVC hull. Yeah, it's like a, literally like a surf life-saving little dinghy yeah, thing. Yeah, it's they like use. one of those things on steroids. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. Purposely built for racing. Yeah. Um, built in South Africa, originated there, the sport. Um, and, yeah, they're, uh, they're virtually a fiberglass nose cone, uh, aircraft aluminium transom, and, yeah, the rest is, is uh, carbon fibre floorboards if you could afford them. And a PVC hull, yeah. So, uh, and just one person driving it, or do you have someone at the front doing the old leaning? Yeah, thing? no, two more, more sort of uh, like a sidecar, yeah, sort of deal. Okay. Your your co-pilot helps balance the boat out, and uh, yeah, a lot of yelling and screaming between the two of us. Yeah, <laughs> you weren't the co-pilot, were you? You were you're on the on nah, the... mate. I yeah, yeah, I need the throttle. <laughs> <laughs> and and now on you too. I reckon you built your own floorboards and everything, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so you're racing. So, how big are the boats? They're about what three meters or something like that. Uh, four point one meters. Oh, so they're a bit bigger. Yeah, four point one. Yeah, four point one with a fifty on them. Um, power to weight is just nuts. Yeah. What sort um, of outboards you run? Um, when I was racing, we were allowed to run Tahatsu and Yamaha. Yep. Um, as the years went by, um, it was all Tahatsu, Tahatsu's because uh, Yamaha. We, what we were finding it was. We couldn't enhance horsepower. Yeah. We were allowed to strengthen a lot of components, but we weren't allowed to enhance horsepower. And it was getting to a stage where the, without getting into the technical stuff too much, the all two stroke mm. and the windows in the ports, um, there was a lot of dis, um, oh, what, what's the word? Um, the, the measurements there, Yamaha couldn't give us the tolerances. Yeah, yep, okay. So it was hard to tell whether someone was mucking around with the windows and trying to... Yeah. Yep. So because Yamaha couldn't give us the tolerances, um, we just made it even playing field and trying to make it more affordable for everybody, you know. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so mainly Tahatsu's in the end there and uh, 50 horsepower. Um, so what sort of speeds would you get out of that? Uh, in the surf... Depending on your prop, you know, yep. props, we're running anything from a 10 up to 19s, 21 pitch. Yeah. Um, yep. We used to race flat water with the F1 boys there as a bit of a um, different class. Um, offshore racing as well. We yep. do 100k offshore racing on mainly on the east coast, up and down the east coast. But So just go through like flat water, what's that <coughs> in like dams or something like that is or just um, so, water? Yeah, so we, we did that as a bit of a publicity thing to try and make the the sport grow mm -hmm. and tagged along with their series. Yep. And um, they used to do about eight eight races a year, mm -hmm. um, mainly Queensland and New South Wales. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was in the flat water. And so in the flat water, these things to, are built to race in the surf. Like that's yeah. where yep. everyone wants to see a boat going upside down and, yep. um, you know, stacks and carnage. Um, so, uh, so where are you, if you're racing in the surf, like if you're racing the flat water, obviously, are you doing a, a circuit? Circuit racing, yeah. And so you're not point A to point B, you're doing a circuit. And then, so you've got spectators sitting on the bank watching. Yeah. When you're in the surf, what happens? Are you do a hundred Ks in the surf? What, how does <clears> that work? So when we used to do hundred Ks in the surf, what we'd try and do still for spectators, you know, to keep them there, we'd be running and that's where it sort of got a little bit technical too. We'd, we'd want as much top end as we could get. Yeah. But we still had to come back every lap and do a, a circuit in the surf through the white water. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can put a real tall prop on, but then when you come back into that surf, mate, and those big green waves are curling <laughs> in front of you, you want to be able to – you want that, you know, that throttle. Yeah, And you yeah. want power on tap. Yeah. And if you're running a 21-pitch prop, you're going to sit there all day long just getting smashed by waves, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, like, for example, a one-kilometre circuit and you're doing it 100 times? No, no, about 20 k's we used to do, I think. Yeah, 20 k's out around, okay. around a buoy or a couple of yeah, boats, okay. as Marshall boats, something like that. Um, we used to go out through Botany Bay and go around uh, 
Wedding Cake Island, I think it's called out oh, there, yeah. something like that. Um, we used to do two laps of that one and then a big lap through Botany Bay. Um, Are you refueling during that? Yeah, so you'd have compulsory fuel stops oh. where you have to coe jump out the boat and you'd have to run up through the flags, sort of like a Iron Man sort of thing, yeah. you know, for the spectators, um, pick up a fuel tank and then <laughs> strap the fuel tank back in before you, you could leave the beach. So there was a lot of um, technical components with, uh, yeah, just clipping fuel lines on and off <laughs> and, uh, and strapping fuel tanks in. You weren't allowed to leave. Yet you are trying to hold the boat in the surf without it, like many times boats would flip in this, while you're holding it, while your coey's up there grabbing a fuel tank. Yeah. And you've got a boat upside down, you know, your day's over. So talk us through that when you're doing like like <clears throat> basically a pit stop. So you're coming in through the surf and yep. driving straight up onto the beach. No, nah, well, what you try and do is keep it in the water. So yep. um, you'd, you'd try and come in through the surf and then spin it on a dime and face it into the wave. Yep. It, and that all while that's happening, your coey's, he's bailing out. Yep. He can't get out till your kill switch is out, so it's safe. There's no prop yeah, spinning yep. around. So you got to stop the motor and everything. Stop yep. the motor. Yeah, he's got to jump out. We unstrap the fuel tank. He drags that up, and I'm trying to hold the boat facing into the waves so yep. it's not going to flip over. Um, come back, strap it all back in, and then punch out through. We'd have um, what we used to have uh, called cans, but they're boys set um, to make it as difficult as you could, the yeah. last turn can to be right where the waves are breaking out yeah. the back. So <laughs> you're turning on the face of a wave as it's curling, all that sort of thing, <laughs> all timing and, yeah, yeah, all for the spectators, not for the driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you have many bust-ups, like bad bust-ups or anything like that, flipping boats or getting injured or anything? Yeah, proper, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, well, I, um, my, well, probably my worst one was uh, Australian titles and, yeah, ended up in hospital for a week. Um, down the Gold Coast, um, yeah, we went, we went vertical, and big time, probably twelve meters, I reckon, in the air. They were saying um, twelve come, meters. Yeah, three lengths of the boat. See, <laughs> so boat's four meters. Wow. You hit the face. Yeah. Anyone get photos or videos? Of oh it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we got. It was all old school back then. Like I'm talking. Um, well, I think I pulled up. Um, 2009, I finished racing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I came down on top of the engine, so the boat's vertical, and I've, I've come down on top of the outboard. Yeah. And right on the middle of my shin's gone right on the head of a M16 bolt, so oh. about a 20 mil hole, oh. punched in and then tore right down to my ankle. Jeez. Yeah, split me right open, and I did, I did two ribs at the same time as I wrapped myself around the cowling, you know. Oh. So, yeah, I was... I was sitting in the in the drink with getting smashed by waves because that's why you're out because that's where the waves are. Yeah. Oh. And um, yeah, I could feel my leg no good. Thought I'd broken it because it was all like jelly and flapping around, but it was just because it was dragging so much water, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it was it just opened up like oh. you know like a, like, a like, a like a flap on a stingray. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. God. So, so you're wearing a life jacket while you're racing? Yeah, life yeah, jacket, okay. helmet, everything. So and start, yeah. Not the easiest thing to swim in, you know. So did yeah. you get yourself back in or just people come oh, out to help? Yeah, one of the boys pulled up beside me. They yeah. dragged me in there oh, and, and then they, I think they got a, more of a shock than I did. They said, oh, my God, don't look at your leg. Like, <laughs> so that's the first thing you do. <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, at least it's not broke, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and just drove straight up the beach, left me in the boat and – uh yeah, we got the ambos down in the troopy and put me on the stretcher and in there. And yeah, a week later, I was back out and <laughs> have another crack. Back into it. Uh, so how, like, how obviously it's a com fairly competitive things. Like you said, the Australian title. So yeah. is that that's like the pinnacle in, in Australia? Obviously, is it the Australian title? So how far up did you get in that? Yeah, you ended up cracking it. Yeah. Yeah. So num number one, mate. Australian number, number one. Number one there oh. for twelve oh, months. Yeah. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Flew the flag. Um, but um, yeah, it's <clears throat> it wasn't a it's not a massive sport, but um, there's there's enough guys doing it and and very serious, you know, yep. like um, and and s like sponsorship and that. So you, yep. you, you're not just doing it for yourself. You got sponsors there, and yep. so you're trying to do the right thing by them. Um, we we went over to um, <clears throat> uh, to Perth <clears throat> um, for Gravity Games one year. Yep. So we were we were paid to go over there. I think Fox 
took that up or something. It was sponsored by um, Vodafone and Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. So it's all all like the extreme sports. Yep. Um, so what, what what so the Gravity Games you said? Yeah, I think it was called Gravity Games. Yeah. So what other stuff do they do there? Like um, so you had your boats and then yeah, they had the crusty demons and oh, yeah, guys yep. like that oh, there. Cool. Yeah, there was a lot of nutcases there like <laughs> ourselves. So we fitted right in. You know? Yeah. Now, how'd you go over there? Mate? Was it something a bit different to doing it on the east coast or? Um, what it ended up being was um, Australia versus New Zealand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh and, uh, no. Any Kiwis <laughs> out there? Uh, yeah, you might remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair was a bit shorter then. Though. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and uh, funnily enough, whenever we raced the Kiwis, the, cr- the Kiwis would race as a team. Yeah. And the Aussies, mate, we couldn't get our shit together. Right? <laughs> it was just every man for himself, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, we were... We were a hot topic and we got targeted, so yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, good fun though. Mm. Uh, so uh, I know <laughs> we, we we've, we've spoken about it um, once before. You did a um, uh, who did you, you took somebody with you um, uh, for a TV program or something like that, buddy? Yeah, mm-hmm. back in the day, the uh, NRL <laughs> there used to be a footy show on Channel Nine. A lot of people probably remember. Yeah, the NRL footy show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was Fatty, Fatty, and, Fatty yeah. Vorton, that. Fatty Vorton and um, um, the Chief and Sturlo, um, Matty Johns. And, uh, yeah, they used to do a segment in their, in their show weekly called Daredevil, Daredevil Dudes, I think it was. Yeah. And so they'd be dead or put up to do something crazy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they'd try and sort of uh, push each other to their limits as far as would, they'd find something, a weakness that one of them didn't like. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was on. So uh, we ended up taking those boys out. But funnily enough, um, the day that it was um, organised to happen, um, a little mini cyclone off the Gold Coast, pretty unheard of. Yeah. All the beaches were closed and, uh, yeah, she was pretty wild. Like, <laughs> So who did yeah. you take out? Um, I took out Matty Johns. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were sort of – we all had bets before what we were going to do to get the publicity and all the rest <laughs> of it. And, yeah, it was sort of – it was half stage, but it wasn't. And uh, this is like probably before the days of public liability insurance <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, well, funny you say that. I did get a, I did get a, yeah, a big letter in the mail. <laughs> uh, I think back then, uh, thanks to Channel Nine, I think they sorted it out for me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, um, we ended up. We put it on for the camera, that's for sure, and end up tipping him over. So, uh, yeah. yeah, with myself as well. <laughs> so what were you doing, just basically starting a race off or something like going through Yeah, the was, uh, we did a little mock-up um, for the camera and um, there was a lot of cameras there, guys in the water and uh, they put back then um, there wasn't so many GoPros and things like that around. So we, yeah. I had a proper helmet, one of theirs, and um, with a camera moulded into it. Yeah, yeah. And had to wear that. And, um, yeah, we were sort of mocking up what we would do in a race. And he was going quite well. I was getting him to move towards the front of the boat because that's what balances it out. You can yep. do a lot with the throttle, but you still need that that balance of the boat, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he was doing, he was going quite well, but um, – and and sort of egging me on, oh, well, let's go a bit, bit harder. And so we did. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, – that wave got a, it sort of he just froze and yeah he, he saw that green water and <laughs> when you when you're going at it at 80 k's and that wave's coming towards you like yeah they they come up pretty quick and yeah so uh he didn't move and i thought he was going to and <laughs> there's only so much you could do with the throttle and i thought uh, we're gonna go over anyway so i might as well make it look good you know <laughs> oh, yeah, so oh so in like in a Perfect conditions. What sort of top speed would you get in them things? Um, oh, probably 110 k's, like oh. two up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the 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 bigger fellas um, carrying a bit extra ballast mm. um, used to struggle a bit. But the yeah, in the say the the lighter crews would would sort of boogie. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but us the mother nature sort of evens it out. You know, like yeah, yeah. Um, as soon as the wind starts to pick up. 
and she starts getting a little bumpy. Yeah. Little fellas can't hang on to them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. me and Mikey make a good rough weather team, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Might have to put a one in front of that 50, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, put bloody some pods hell. on the back. Every <laughs> yeah. uh, so you, you're up here, I think... Um, I think the first time we met, because we've met you a few times, obviously, and you've done heaps of stuff here around the, the club for um, help the club out and um, they helped us out and that as well um, with the lodge and everything. Um, you, I think you'd just come from the Cape, I think, the first time I met you maybe. So when we spoke a fair bit about, um, like, you've done a heap of Cape trips because that's something that, like, a lot of people sort of aspire to, I suppose. Yeah, like I've never done it and around. always wanted to. Yeah, neither have I. Like, oh, I've been up a little bit but not certainly not, like, like, the stuff you've done. Mm. So you've done quite a few Cape trips. Yeah, I think I've been up there eight or nine times in total. Yep. Um, I actually flew up once. There's some of the um, mates of mine that were, they'd organised a trip and I couldn't get away with work. Yep. Um, so I actually flew into Bamiga. There's an airstrip, uh, probably 60 k's from the tip or something. I can't remember exactly now, but, yeah. Yep. So they, um, they picked me up from the airstrip after... The uh, locals cleared all the cattle off it and we, <laughs> we circled about six times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's six locals in the back of the Toyota and they're all running around and <laughs> yahooing and trying to get these cattle off the, off the airstrip and down we come. But, uh, yeah, I think my first trip was uh, oh, early, mid-90s. Um, yeah, we went up, up the Cape and, yeah, oh, my God, mate. I thought I had a vehicle prepared <laughs> and back then, yeah, she she was – broke the chassis in half. Like oh, the, no. Yeah, proper. And what sort of vehicle did you have then? An you? old Hilux. Yeah. But um, it was only a four-cylinder, so uh, I uh, put a uh, Holden six-cylinder in it before yeah, yeah. we left. <laughs> um, so that sorted out the uh, under horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so oh, petrol, a petrol engine. Yeah, petrol. Yeah, yeah um, plenty of stick. Um, and did it. Tried to do it, you know, properly, and did six months of testing and um, custom radiators, so it wasn't overheating and and sorted all that out. But um, just the fatigue and the roads up there at that time were just absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah. metal fatigue, man. Like engine mounts, battery cradles, um, yeah, the chassis was a big one, but not a showstopper. We sorted that. But <laughs> <laughs> Cable tires. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we actually. Yeah, that's another funny story because we actually um, got to Archer River. We had to borrow a welder, and um, we got a bit of angle, and and we were sort of having a look and having a few beers, thinking about how we're going to attack it, and thought, oh well, if we can get it going, um, we can get to Weeper where the mine is yeah. and we'll get it sorted half properly there, you know? Yeah. So we, we sort of, um, me and me and the other boys, they were welders, so that was, or well, one of them was a sheet metal worker. And uh, so we we overcompensated on the chassis and, and sort of took it up a little bit because we <laughs> thought we weren't real confident in our repair <laughs> and um, we should have been confident because uh, she never come back down. <laughs> always had that little camber in her. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, it never went to Weeper either. We just uh, kept on going. She was like that for a couple of years. It actually went back up to the Cape the next year <laughs> the same way. Oh, and, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but, yeah, but back then, yeah, um, there was no bridges. Um, we even contemplated and, and walked across the Jardine. We were going to drive the Jardine back then. Mm. Um, but uh, we got three quarters across and I don't know for – people that have been up there but the northern bank is always a bit shady and that's where the big lily pads are and we all know what hides underneath them so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we chickened out there and uh plus the fact that uh the day before mine being a petrol i sunk it um and then two hours later i think the same day it uh it caught fire um <laughs> Yeah, so I broke the chassis. Oh, mate, it all happened that trip. Like, yeah, proper, like, yeah. What happened was why caught fire, the, the cradle on the radiator had cracked. Yeah. And so we pulled up at um, the Wenlock River, which was south of the Jardine. That's the other big river crossing, yeah. which has got a causeway over it now. We had to drive through that. We got to that at 8 o'clock at night 
and the camping area is on the northern bank. So we had spotlights and everything and thought, yeah, so we can cross this and we did. But um, got up in the morning, didn't was uh, unaware of the radiator being broken. Yeah. And so it's flexed back onto the fan and then I've scored all the radiator uh-huh. and got a leak. So forever then I was had the radiator cap sort of half on to release the pressure. Yeah, yeah. And um, every 50, 60 Ks, I used to have to take the cap off, put a bit of water in it, put it back on. So I had a rag shoved in behind the headlight. <laughs> yeah. And uh, eventually it blew out onto the extractors and we got a full-on barbecue going on. <laughs> but luckily I'd sunk it like hours before, so all the floor mats were soaked, so we had wet bags, like wet floor mats to put it in. But, yeah, proper... Melted the snorkel, the the <laughs> throttle, because I'm I'm on the <laughs> I'm on the UHF going. Nah, can you fellas smell anything burning back then? <laughs> and they're like, I think it's just because we're hungry, like we haven't eaten. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, as I've said that, the throttle just went to the floor, and I'm like, oh, no, oh that's something under there. <laughs> and yeah, it was. Um, so we ended up had to tow it to um, to Bamiga. And uh, ended up pinching a uh, a brake cable off some kid's push bike, <laughs> <laughs> and that was me throttle. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, we tried the old the uh, we tried the old fishing line, the hundred pound fishing line through the quarter glass as yeah, a yeah. throttle to get there. But yeah, that just kept snapping, and so <laughs> we ended up just putting the tow rope on. And it's crazy that like yeah. stories like this, like. I suppose people that plan a trip for years and, and do it with, uh, like, all the best gear and stuff like that, they go and they do it all successfully and they're very little stories. But when you're using, I don't know, stuff that you've built yourself and whatever, that, these sort of stories, like, people that get out and just do stuff, yeah. like, you get stories like this. Like, I, yeah, I can't even think of anything I've done like this. You know? Might be a bit wild at the time, but, yeah, 30 years on, it's a bit... Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, good, yeah. good laugh. Yeah. And, I mean... Yeah, we thought we were prepared, and we were. Like, you know, we had a, a – we weren't the only ones having dramas, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. This, this is just the, one trip, though. Like, you've, you've done it nine times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't like things beating me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't dare me to do too many things because <laughs> I don't give up real easy. But, um, yeah, that, that was all in the one trip and it went on and on and on. We ended up going out Airs Rock in the same – in the same or Uluru these days in the same vehicle. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we finished it off with a bang at um at Birdsville. Yeah. But because we had so many breakdowns and this went on for like weeks and weeks, um, we allowed three days up our sleeve. Yeah, yeah. Because we thought we can't miss Birdsville. Like that's the end of the trip. And um, <laughs> so we, where, where we, do you go from Brisbane to the Cape to Birdsville? Yeah, bus. Yeah. That's a fairly big detour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we and we went around the rock. Out there on the way, but <laughs> did a lap around that. Yeah. Oh. And so, oh. But um, I, I, we, we from Airs Rock, we were coming back, and um, me brother-in-law, we got to the intersection back to um, the Stewart Highway, mm. and he's realised that he's left his wallet at the roadhouse when we fueled up that morning. Oh. Uh, which was I, I can't remember now, but something like four hours or something, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. And um, yeah, it's a long time. It was thirty years ago now, or whatever it is. But <laughs> um, yeah, so he's we we let let the other guys go back, and we just sat there for the whole day and um, caught back up again. Then we went across the Plenty Highway, uh-huh. and um, we allowed an extra three days because we thought we we're going to break down again multiple times before we get there. <laughs> And we end up getting there three days early. So <laughs> we got there. There was no one there and there's only one thing to do at Birdsville. So. <laughs> other, other than race horses and cattle, <laughs> oh, just mate. drink beer. Well, uh, it was the only one place to get away from the flies <laughs> and that was the pub. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. yeah so. There's another one of my sort of bucket list places I've never been to but always wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birdsville would be a cracking one to get to, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, was it a big thing then, the birds races? Yeah, but nothing like what it is now, mate. And... um. Oh, the stories and the characters are just like, yeah, stories that we, we met some. Um, so on the same trip, when I did the radiator that morning, we've woken up. So it was drizzling, raining too, and it was in the dry season. So that was unusual. And 
we pulled up and we didn't think there was um, anyone else camped there. And then we were, I was in a Hilux, like I was saying, with a, just a canvas canopy. Yep. And we used to sleep in swags, two of us in mine and well, three across the canopy then. <laughs> yeah, heads and tails out, 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 sticking out the sides. And um, didn't worry me because uh, I can sleep across a car quite comfortably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might not come across in video, Ed. You're closer yeah. to the camera, but yeah. <laughs> I'm in the high chair. <laughs> not, a, not a basketball player, anyway. <laughs> no, and um, woke up to this noise like, gum, 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 and then this thud on the ground, and gum, 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 thud, and I'm like, what the hell? And I undo the zipper, and here's this fellow with big beard, dries a bone, with a hat, the whole lot, with a tomahawk. And trying to get this scrub turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Malice's not that old. No. <laughs> Must have been his old man, I don't reckon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, there ended up look- being three of these guys there and they were in an old Falcon ute mm. and um, it had no windscreen in it and they'd been up and were coming back and um, they didn't get all the way but um, transport department was travelling the road up to some of the communities apparently yep. and uh, so they'd driven the falcon into the scrub and cut down trees and everything hiding it because they didn't want it to be seen <laughs> and um, we ended up running into them <laughs> at birdsville of all places like you know weeks later yeah and uh yeah one of them got a job as a mechanic at the <laughs> at the at the um pub uh, at the uh servo there so <laughs> that's unreal mm. well, they were looking for a feed, obviously. The, the, the scrub yeah, tank. They were, yeah, they were pretty hungry by then. So. <laughs> You'd have to uh, be, wouldn't you? Oh, That's God. Yeah. In more recent years, I reckon, like some of the first conversations that I had you when I first met you here uh, a couple of years back or a few years back was um, talking about, um, oh, what's it called? The place, uh, it's a bit of a dirt track to get in there, maybe 100 k's off the highway near south of Rockhampton. Oh, Stanage, Stanage um, Bay, Stanage yeah. Stanage Bay, yeah. Yeah, 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 I've, yeah just, you, I've just actually come back up that way. And yeah, I remember you'd sp- you have spent <clears throat> a fair amount of time there. Yeah, yeah. I know um, know the publican and his wife there, their whole family. Um, they're quite, you know, close close sort of friends. And, um, yeah, it's um, it's not unlike this in some respects, like you Stanage know. Bay. Yeah, it's, um, it's a small community. Yeah. Um, it's not a fishing club by any means or anything like that, but it's a small community, and it's a, and it's more of a stepping stone to out of the to the islands and the reef, um, and it's sort of a bit iconic because uh, to the access there is just above Shoalwater Training, so oh, where the all mili- the mi- military, military area, which is all closed, which is all closed, so you can't go south of their land base. Yep. Um, and it's it's just one road that goes out through cattle properties, um, and out to a peninsula really, um, which they call Thirsty Sound, and um, yeah, and that leads you out to the reef and um, all the islands, and yeah, some of the biggest mud crabs in Australia there. That yeah. was where I was going to get to. The, yeah. Some of the photos you've shown me of yeah. uh, the big mud crabs. They're certainly a lot bigger than the biggest ones you'll get here. Yeah, no, nah, they're up like over the three kilo. Like, yeah, they're Monsters. Pro- proper big, yeah. You know, have to tie bloody four or five of them a day to... <laughs> to, to <laughs> <laughs> Easy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Easy life. Yeah. yeah, so... um. wonder why they grow so big there. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I think... um. Big tides, like mm. they're big six, seven metre tides and that, I think. A um, lot of water flow and, um, yeah, just probably a lot lot more food source in that area, you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the exact reasons, but, um, yeah, it, it the facts speak for themselves, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah they, they are known for big crab there, though. Yeah. That's a, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what about fishing around there? Yeah, fishing's quite good. You can catch... Um, uh, black Jew, hundreds of meters from the from the boat ramp. There, there's big Jew holes and stuff like that. But there's um, there's all close seasons for that now. We need to make sure we look after our fishery here because if we, we this it's a, a, a we get 
people come up from Queensland all the time talking about this, about different species, they like the seasons open or closed, and that, we, we don't want that here. And, so. and closed, your, closed areas and things like yeah. that. I suppose one thing for here is, though, like there, even though that's probably fairly remote to drive to, I suppose, in terms of maybe the commercial fishery, I'm not, and I'm, I don't know, but um, I'm guessing that there's a fair bit of effort in terms of commercial oh, yeah. um, fishery and stuff yeah, like I that along people, that coastline. Like, and yeah, fishing per kilometre in the Northern Territory, whether it's recreational or commercial, is, is not very high. Yeah, yeah. like there's mm. no demersal fishery here other than, other than like um, prawn, prawn trawlers and yeah. stuff that work in the Gulf. But ag again, massive closed area around the islands for the commercial prawn trawlers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. they can only work offshore. Yeah. So I think we're we're very lucky here, and I think that's probably why we've got such a good fishery is because um, we just don't have that commercial effort in um, in a lot of things, you know, apart from mud crab, which is the only the only one. Yeah. Um, but like things like jewfish and golden snapper, they take a long time to um, to get to size, you know, to get to breeding age. Yeah. Whereas especially those big golden snapper, they could be. 30, 40 years old or something. Oh, older even, yeah, yeah I think. So, yeah, about. jacks and that as well. And You almost feel bad taking one. Yeah. But then you sort of have, if you if it's from 20 metres of water, you kind of have to take it because... Yeah. It, and, and again, that's why we have, I think, in, in the territory, we have a lot more bag limits than size limits yeah. because, you, well, you know, they, if you're uh, killing the fish anyway... Possession limits, they call it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you, you, and it, like then they've reduced that down to, I think it's three golden snapper now per yeah. person, two black jewfish. Yeah. Um, and that's for that reason because they do take a long time to grow up and um, unlike, you know, like things like mud crab where they reproduce a lot more and they, they grow to full size very quickly. But things like, yeah, golden snapper and black jewfish, which are, you know, um, you know, I think I think that they may refer to them as at-risk species maybe. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so um, because, yeah, and obviously they're highly targeted by recreational fishers as well, especially things like Darwin Harbour and stuff like that, you know. They're highly targeted species. That's the two things that people want to catch, yeah. you know, because they're good eating, but obviously. some of the fish on the at-risk species, like we have in plague proportions out here in the Well, in goldies the here. Like, yeah. Goldies, you can go out some days and, as you know, you'll see, you'll bring up a goldie and there'll be 50 chasing it up, yeah. you know. So it's not at risk of being wiped out. It's at risk because they because they take so long to grow. And, and, and they die easily yeah, yeah, from yeah, deep so water. So you that, know, they get barotrauma. Yeah, so... Yeah, so it's not a population thing. It's yeah, mm. but I mean, we got good populations here, and other places don't have as good population yeah. as well. So you need that, you know, they can breed up here and then and then move around, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. So you've done. Um, so we went through your first Cape trip. So your your last Cape trip quite different from your first. Like like you almost live out of your truck now. Like you got a. A Toyota Land Cruiser and you tow a trailer with a quad bike and tinny and everything like that. And right but now I'll bring up a photo or a video of, of the truck with, the, <laughs> with the, the whole set. It's an impressive setup. <laughs> People at home are going to want to see it. <laughs> the, um, uh, yeah, we'll put a photo of Mullet's Toyota on there instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? uh, yeah. Same colour. Yeah, same colour. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, so it's a, um, so you, you basically, like you could live out of your truck. Like you could go and, well, you you, yeah. you are pretty much here. Like even though you're staying at my, my place, you're still living in your truck. Yeah. <laughs> no, no still want, I want some comfort, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember to close those doors, mate. Zip those. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch During this. the Super Bowl, yeah. <laughs> Started a pissing down, right? Oh shit, me, me rooftop cameras, uh, all buddy. Uh, I need a remote control zipper. <laughs> oh. uh. mm. But you could, like, you could seriously live out of your truck, like, pretty much full time, and and you do, you do a fair bit of like remote uh, traveling around. Like uh, we were talking maybe yesterday, you, you're mates with another fellow that does YouTube videos, the camp man, and that, and you've done some trips with him and that, and mm. like you've gone on your quad bike even for like a week at a time or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind getting away and sort of roughing it a bit. Um, yeah, got the quad bike set up so I can – I've got a folding t uh, trailer that I've built for the tinny. Yep. And um, can actually tow that. So get, get, get the truck in as far as you can without getting into too much trouble. And then you can, you can traverse along the salt pans or wherever you are, yep. beaches. And um, I've even – Ventured out and built some ramps and uh, modified the the front of the tinny. Yeah. Put a platform there so I can actually ride the quad bike up into the boat and then cross cross the creek and come back, pick the trailer up and go again. So and this is a small tinny, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty 
Pretty, it wasn't a bit bigger, but yeah, you can only so so much. You've done this. You've you've you, you drive your quad bike into that little tinny. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's a bit hard doing it solo. Like, uh, it's better if there's someone else around. Yes. I saw a video of the fellas from uh, <coughs> All, All for Adventure. Adventure putting a quad bike in a small tinny, and yeah. it, it didn't went, <laughs> didn't end, end real well that one. No, <laughs> yeah, I'd sort of done it, but previous to that, but um, I haven't ventured uh as much as what they did in that uh they had probably well i think they had two at the time and they were going down a an estuary yeah um yeah and there so was you probably just, just there to was cross pro- do like a crossing or something if that, that was the idea yeah, yeah. just just yeah, so to you're cross, not traveling with it yeah. no nah, not ideal there's um yeah you put uh 3.7 meter tinny in the water and then put a 400 kilo quad <laughs> bike in there <laughs> Um, they're not a lot of freeboard, but surprisingly, <laughs> not not it's quite stable. Yeah, yeah. So the initial run was in fresh water in Queensland, and um, yeah, because I thought if it goes bad, at least it's only just had a wash, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, no, I was surprised it all went it all went quite well, but um, yeah, the biggest thing if you do it solo is you can tend to find yourself chasing. Chasing the uh, boat with the quad bike as you're trying to drive up onto it, it starts to take off. You know? oh, as he's riding up the ramps, he's trying to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, was that the, the door was it? Hey, eh? oh, was know. that noise then? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It sounded like ice falling. Or something. Oh yeah. yeah, I might have been in the sink or something. Mate. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, you've like you set up basically. You can be fully self sufficient. With your quad bike and your boat, like you can you can take your you can take your your quad bike out of your trailer, take your boat off the top of your trailer, you build your portable trailer like on site that you've manufactured yourself, put your boat on that, hook that up to your quad bike, and then you go up the coast or wherever you want to go out bush or whatever, get to a creek crossing, put the boat in, fold the trailer up, put it in the boat, take it to the other side, come back, put the ramps on the front of the boat, drive the quad bike up onto it, yeah, take the quad bike to the other side. No, nah, the <laughs> ramps are all hinged. Ramps oh, are hinged. You don't have to fold the, the trailer up. Um, the trailer actually floats too, so you could tow it behind, which I haven't <laughs> tried yet, but yeah, like a road train on water. That sounds more like a bullfrog trick. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all mullet on it. All mullet, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah so I um, uh, tried to make it... Um, as simple as I could, you know. So uh, you, you drag all this gear and you don't want to sort of get lazy because people do. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> you were and saying how it, how it uh, the ramps, you were saying, like makes the boat sort of push away as you're trying to drive it up. I wonder if there's like a little, uh, especially because it'll usually be sandy or, or muddy where you are trying to cross somewhere. I wonder if there's like a peg system you could. Oh, I normally put the anchor out. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah put the anchor out yeah. as well. So I can run it out and... Um, yeah, it's just a bit dodgy when you're playing with crocodiles and uh, <laughs> <laughs> especially so. and do, you do a lot of this stuff solo as well. Like yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've got to be very careful about. Like, you've got to be sort of half mad, but you've got to be half smart too. You know. Yeah. Otherwise, oh. you just don't come back. Like just yesterday, I think yeah. it was you were telling us about like a, a two a.m. tide you were waiting for on a particular camping trip. Yeah. Where you had to yeah. cross cross over a that that could have gone bad. Um, <laughs> Chances a lot of things could have gone bad. <laughs> 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 Not your hair's grey, he's only 27, folks. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Yeah, no, I, um, I nearly proper buggered that up. Yeah, so you'd been camping. Yeah, so I, I, think, I think I was camping for about a week. Um, I was up there, made him on Dale. He went up as well. He's got a quad bike and he had a little trailer and then he ended up coming back um, after a couple of days and I ended up staying a bit longer and I think I was up there for nearly a week. Um, the limiting factors, fresh water um, and just living off off the land or the sea in so that, on that, that on case. Your, yeah. You don't have a little desalinator on your uh, quad <laughs> no, bike? No, no, I've got a fridge now. <laughs> yeah, you've um, got it. I've got beers uh, out of it. <laughs> yeah, after this episode I, I upgraded to a fridge and ditched the esky because the ice done the last more than a day up here yeah. and uh yeah so i've got a fridge there now but at the time i didn't so um you you went fishing through the day but everything was catch and release till about you know four o'clock in the afternoon because uh you couldn't keep it for the 
for dinner for night. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you put your pressure on yourself by four o'clock to catch something edible. Um, but, yeah, I was looking at the tides, the place where I was. Um, there was a tidal creek there and um, I didn't pack all the ramps um, to go in the tinny to cross creeks at that time because my mate went up and he had his tinny as a uh, quad bike as well. Um, so logistically it would have been a nightmare. So I didn't worry about the ramps and I was looking at the tides and uh, – I'm like, oh, no, I'm good for another three days or so. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was all over the tides. And then I, then I actually, the day before, I looked at it and I've gone, hold on a minute, that's AM, not PM. <laughs> <laughs> so it's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, so, uh, which when you're in the bush is a very, very, very different, yeah, very in, different place. <laughs> yeah, especially with a head torch, you know. In croc country, <laughs> crossing over creek. I, I, I bought a couple of items since that trip. I've <laughs> actually bought a fridge and a de- half-decent torch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, 2 o'clock in the morning, um, I've, I've got my alarm going off on my phone, which I didn't really need because I didn't sleep a wink. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, pack, pack the whole shooting match up and I'm tromping down the beach, towing the like, tinny in tow and I get to the creek mouth and I'm like, holy, this has changed heaps in a week. You know? So and just so for people that don't un- don't get it, you have to wait for the low tide because there's like seven eight meter where you were seven eight meter tides, and at high tide there's no beach, it's all underwater. There's all the creeks are three four meters deep. Yeah, so this, you've got to the, wait to the yeah, low tide. Yeah, this was on um like the west coast of the territory <laughs> over there. So um yeah, not not huge tides, but yeah, definitely tidal, and mm. that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for that low tide to cross this creek and. In a week's time, impossible to do that because yep. the top because of the tides aren't low enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm I've got the lights going on the quad bike, and uh, I've got a light bar on there, so it does a half decent job. But uh, she she gets quite dark out there, and uh, <laughs> no street lights. <laughs> and as I'm getting to this creek, you know, it's two thirty in the morning as well, so I, I'm on high alert for everything around me, and. Uh, I start going down towards the creek mouth and I'm like, holy, this has changed, you know. Mm. This has changed proper. Well, in just a few days since you yeah. had gone across. Anyway, um, I didn't want to stop anywhere because I'm on wet sand. So, uh, and I wasn't real keen on walking it either. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, across I went and at hard bottom and I'm like, oh, yeah, happy days. This is really good. And then as the lights panned onto the southern bank, it was like a big jump up <laughs> and I could see problems like straight away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, so I've done the old with the handlebars. I'm trying to pan around with me lights because yeah, yeah. that's the only way I could see because uh, by then the, the head torch has gone flat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just had to commit and have Full a commitment. crack and I tried to go up this jump up and, yeah. She just went straight down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, anyway, so uh, by then, and this, it, it was running out quite, you know, quite decent. Luckily still running out, so that was sort of a benefit. Mm. So I did get the tides right. And, um, yeah, I've jumped off, but I couldn't see bugger all, you know. Like I could only see where the lights would point on the quad bike and I couldn't <laughs> even turn the, the wind. <laughs> and I couldn't turn the wheels, so <laughs> now my lights – are shooting to the moon because it's just gone down like that. Yeah, draw bars in the sand and, yeah, tinny's still in the water, back wheels of the quad bike in the water, front wheels are high and dry but there, yeah. So um, I had a bit of a quick look around and I, I thought you can't just sit here because it's just going to get worse. So I thought first things first, I'll see if I can reverse out and luckily it did. Um, so I'm re- now I'm reversing back across the creek backwards, trying not to – I don't know whether you guys have reversed a quad bike with a trailer on it, but they're not the easiest no. things. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> especially in a creek at night. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so reverse, reversed back and, and then just came on a really steep, uh, acute angle and uh, headed out to sea and, and sort of went up and climbed the bank that way and, and it worked quite well actually and – yeah, it was uh, 
got away with it. But, <laughs> Survived. Uh, yeah, didn't have a beer to celebrate or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, got out, got out of that one to, too. It's funny to like, we laugh about it now, but at the time, your heart rate, like you would have been, oh, it would have been so full on. Yeah, that's why I don't wear those watch things, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be like alarm mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this watch will self destruct. <laughs> like, oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, there's been a couple of little hairy moments, but yeah. <laughs> Keeps you alive, I think. Yeah, keeps yeah. you going. Well, you yeah. get out there and do stuff, which uh, that's that's why you have these stories because you get out there, like yeah. Well, oh, there's no use having the gear and not using it. Eh? Yeah. That's why you buy it for. You yeah. work hard for the money and you spend it on things that you want to, you know, do. And so, um, yeah, just get out there and have a crack. Yeah, get yeah. amongst it. And all your stuff, like what well, we sort of mentioned already, but like pretty much everything, like your trailer and everything, you've all it's all custom made like you've done it all yourself for exactly how you sort of want it yeah like um i got a a few good mates and they all or a lot of them um happen to be sheet metal workers so um yeah they they hate it when they get a phone call from me or a text <laughs> message they must cringe because i've always you know it's always um can i send you a photo of this <laughs> i just need you to fold this up or <laughs> yeah because um i don't have any of the big equipment um so yeah. yeah, I come up with all the uh, yeah the harebrain ideas, <laughs> and um, they got to sort of help me out and come <laughs> to the party, and uh, yeah, they get involved as well and get dragged into it. But uh, yeah, just um, everyone like things work different for different people, and yeah, yeah, yeah um, I think that's half half the. Um, it's sometimes that's just as much fun as the trip, you know, building something that works for yourself. And yep. um, yeah, it's it's new, unique, but um, it works really well for you. Things like um, if you had a truck, Mikey, you'd have it set up to store a lot of camera gear, and you'd have to charge a lot of batteries. You yeah, know? yeah. So you'd have things set up, you know, for what you were doing, yeah. um, rather than. And I'm trying to work on the road now. I've sort of just hit hit the road, and so I've had to put. You're limited with um, space and, and um, what you can carry, but I've had to sort of carry some gear, some tools, so I can earn a few bucks on the way. Yeah, because you're by trade, you're like you're a chippy by trade. Yeah, I've done a done a few trades, but um, yeah, I've sort of I'm uh, in a different industry now, um, doing a um, a bit of work around the territory in in the remote communities with the power yep. stations. So mm -hmm. yeah, company that I work for is. Um, got a contract to um put the uh or do a lot of work at the power stations and reinstalling yep. engines and stuff like that so yeah yep um so i got a good gig there um but yeah you gotta carry some gear if you um you can be a tradesman but if you don't have any tools you're nobody you know yeah I mean? so, yeah, yeah yeah well i know you've done a lot of stuff here for the club like you've done a lot of renos and stuff for us and in some of our around the campgrounds with like um uh, well, what was the first job we had you doing? We had you here put for the, actually... Put the signs up, I reckon. Oh, we put the, we put the, we put the signs up. Uh, yeah. That was one of the first You were in the car with then, me just um, yesterday yeah, or the yeah. day before when we drove past and go, oh, geez, they, they still look all right. You <laughs> <laughs> sounded like you were surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyone that's been to King Ash Bay in the last couple of years, you'll see the uh, beautiful new uh, big signs as you come in. So you, you do those. That was the first... Uh, that was a very small contract. Yeah, but yeah, then, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. That was a couple of hours. We we uh we had you for a few weeks, I reckon, doing uh, renos to our um, unpowered camping area in uh, the ablutions. I reckon doing on Jenny Flats there. Yeah, yeah, I think you relined a lot of the showers and, and stuff there, like put all new. Um, what do you call it, buddy? Uh, yeah, we resheeted them with um, some lamy panel down there. Yeah, and tried to um, yeah get a bit more life out of them. I, yeah, I think you could say um, yeah, and just make them a little bit more. <laughs> Um, more user friendly for, especially for the cleaning and and yeah. hygiene aspects of it. Yeah, because the the buildings are a bit older and they like timber frame and stuff, and there was some water um, issues there with um, water getting in through the floor and stuff in the wet areas and that. So you fixed all that up and then run new vinyl on the floor and run it up the side. So it's you know, so it's yeah easier to mop out and stuff and and then put lamy panel down the down the walls and stuff to stop the timber and that getting 
eaten out, you know, rot, rotting away or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that you did a few weeks doing that. I think you've um, – actually, I think you were instrumental in our um, – uh, tap beer, mate, uh, dispensing. Yeah, they those kegs take a fair bit to hook up and get the, you know, the pressures right. So there's yeah. a lot of testing there. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, like, I, see, I wasn't involved in any of this, but as a, a norm, just a club <laughs> member looking at what's happened, it, the way the tap beer used to work in a, just a little counter thing they used to wheel out yeah compared to now it's a fully set up into a cool room there's taps on the wall we've got four different taps and that that you set them up did you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um william was uh obviously giving me a hand that's yeah, yeah. that's um part of the reason why i was sort of helping the club out because so that's william he, that like a handyman here at vice president as well yeah. oh and yeah. vice president yeah sorry <laughs> yeah he had a well, a little incident, uh, super, <laughs> Superman incident. <laughs> oh. He's got a ladder there yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, no. So, yeah, uh, he was doing it a bit tough at the time, so I was sort of helping out there. But, um, yep. yeah, we sort of the, – the cool room was um, always supposed to be that, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just sort of re, reworked it a little bit, rejigged it and um, – Pulled a couple of windows out of it and sort of rehashed it all and yeah yeah made the panels up and fitted all the all the taps there and yeah um, I think unfortunately we I was maybe a few hours out from getting it running for uh, Melbourne Cup Day oh uh, yeah that yeah. year but um, yeah but yeah no done a few jobs around it's, the place it's going good now though I know uh, my missus gives you a hard time every time you're here mate you've been around my place with <laughs> tape measure a few she times has a list of jobs there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there there's never there's never no work in uh, King Ash yeah. <laughs> no, no, well, you might as well just stay here mate <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have to now because <laughs> we're, we're raining in at the moment folks so yeah, yeah Scott if you're looking uh, if you're watching mate oh, <laughs> I'm not going to be there anytime soon apparently that's <laughs> <laughs> right we'll look after it for you <laughs> Yeah, we've well, so, got news there in terms of the, the weather at the moment and the roads. Yeah. So well, Ash is off to, off to Vegas or to begin his journey there. Uh, you were going to leave like next Wednesday or something? Yeah, well, next week, yeah. Next week. and But now, like, yeah, the road, uh, Carpentary High is closed, has been for two days now with possible big rain coming over the next week. Yeah. So you're not going to Vegas anymore, mate? <laughs> no, no, I'm, go, I'm going, I'm going. But I'm, I'm going to pay the $945 for a 40-minute flight to Darwin, though. Just fly out from the MacArthur yeah, mine. Yeah, so Just make sure you can still get to the mine. You'll have yeah. to get a, a chopper from the mine, from here to the mine and then fly. Plausible. <laughs> I, I think Ant's going to give me a lift in the morning, actually. So um, I think I need to um, ditch, ditch me trailer and start towing a chopper around <laughs> so I don't get caught. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, yeah, so it's, it's half getting serious now because, um, well, there's only – one flight before next week, before I think Monday, which is tomorrow morning. Yeah. And uh, which is out of the mine, obviously, which is still 100 k's from here. Yeah. Uh, but if I don't get on that, then, um, then yeah, may not be able to fly until next week, next Monday. And then, like, by Monday, we're looking at having a fairly substantial low pressure system over the top of us, yeah. may potential to have even be a cyclone. Yeah. Um, which maybe they wouldn't fly to, you know, might be too wet, too windy, whatever. So, um, so yeah, I had to bite the bullet today and just bought a ticket on the plane tomorrow. And, um, so you're getting out of here tomorrow? <coughs> getting out of here tomorrow, mate. Yeah, I don't want to miss out. All right, out. so episode 15, it'll be me and, uh, me and Ant sitting here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, guys, guys in the Gulf here with uh, me and Ant. And, uh, <laughs> it might be a long range one if I'm halfway stuck back there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got to get me to the mine first, mate. Oh, yeah, right. back. I'll, I'll do one with mullet. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz, um, my missus messaged earlier so, because I, I messaged saying that you're heading off tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, and she said, oh, what are you going to do about the podcast? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, like, yeah, if we miss a week, we'll have, just have to miss a week. And she's like, oh, what, just, just do one with mullet. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> mullet can stand in one week. I'm like, oh, it, it, people would probably love it, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think we've got um, – I think I'll be gone for four Fridays and we've got – we should should have enough to keep, get I us covered. I think so, Yeah. We yeah, if everything works out perfectly, yeah, we should we should have enough. So um, otherwise, I might have to fly back early, mate. <laughs> 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 no, nah, we'll have him sorted. We'll 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 have him all under control. And I'll probably still be here anyway, still doing jobs for Kate. So yeah. <laughs> worst case scenario, he <laughs> <laughs> be uh, too IC. So um, <clears throat> pardon me. 
<laughs> Sorry, oh, mate. Can't geez. fly. Sorry, mate. Can't fly. <laughs> I'm, gl- I'm glad it's not still bloody uh, pandemic. pandemic times, mate. <laughs> Jesus, I'd be, I wouldn't be going anywhere. Uh, had this sore throat, a bit of a bit of a cough. Bloody Reba McIntyre. Oh Better. yeah, bloody yeah, screaming at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop it. <laughs> That's the end. He was saying a lot more than that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, all the, all the Reaper T-shirts got thrown out, mate. <laughs> you were a bit of a Reaper fan as well. Like, it was oh, I didn't yeah. realise. She's, she's, she's actually a, she's a talented, mm. used to be, before the Super Bowl. Yeah, was no, a very talented. Can't even sing the anthem. <laughs> 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 uh, she sang it about 200 times in her career of, of spanning four decades. Yeah, and it's never and gone it's over never this gone time. that long. Oh, oh mate. And trust me, I did my research. She I had thought, money I on it. This, she this had to have like, money on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a stupid smile on her face too. She did. At the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> that. A red devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Well, while we're talking about music, do we want to um, do, we wanna do some Spotify Oh yeah, yeah. So and so every uh, episode, we tried. We did forget with Trent. We do. We did. Yeah. So we'll get him um, next time. He'll, he'll, we'll he'll, get, we'll he'll get be him back. Next time. Yeah. So, um, but every, every uh, episode, we try and get. Um, we add. We've got basically got a, a, a Spotify playlist. Uh, was it Called, golf uh, mud crabbers? Yeah, golf mud crabbers. Yeah. So um, we try and get uh, everyone to add, add a song that's um, yeah the song they like. So um, is there you got a favourite song, mate, or a song you want to add to the playlist? We'll put it on there. Yeah, it's not a favourite, but. Um I was having a little think about it, and uh, there's a song by uh, Tex Perkins yep. called uh, Place in the Sun, I think it is. Place in the Sun, yeah. Yeah, it's got a bit of a story in, to it and sort of, um, yeah, in a way sort of explains, yeah, a little bit about myself yeah, in, yeah. in a roundabout way. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so um, it's a song you can, you can identify with. Oh, I can relate to, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but cool. Um, All right, we'll send it so straight, straight to the list, eh? Yeah. Straight to the list, mate. Tex Perkins. Uh, what about you? What do you got? Um, I've got um, – uh, I, I didn't know this song either, which is – I should have. Um, a Wolf Brothers one. I think it was one of our um, one of our followers uh, might have sent it through on uh, on Facebook. Yeah. Mate, mate, might have made a comment on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, mm. It's called, uh, yeah, uh, Hey Brother. By uh, by the Wolf Brothers and um, yeah, it's just basically just singing about his big brother yeah. um, and that. So yeah, I thought, well, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a little backstory from Ash, or not backstory, but like Ash does have a big brother and and he is very close with him. And yeah, uh, yeah like I know, there's a lot of brother songs that you that you do like. I remember mm. you introduced me to Blood Brothers by Luke Bryan. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and a couple others. Yeah, so songs like that. Yeah, they. I know that. I, You've sort of formed, a, meaning, yeah, formed yeah. a trend for you. They certainly mean something to you. Yeah, cool. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, I'm, got? I'm, I've got I've got the wobbly ones this week. Um, oh, Muller's not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, far out. Yeah. Oh, before we get to my ones, yeah. um, I've actually started uh, on just on my phone uh, a playlist called Recommendations. I'll share it with you. Yeah. And then any time, because we get a lot of people messaging in emailing commenting about oh you should this song this song's a great one this song i'm like that i don't know how to manage that so i've I've just made a a playlist called recommendations as soon as you see a message like that come in just add that song to recommendations yeah and then when you and me are out doing whatever we'll just just play that playlist and just be oh what song was that one you know and yeah 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 so keep sending them in because i mean plenty of people have been there's there's a heap there there's miles yeah yeah i reckon up to a hundred songs probably yep. over the last ten episodes yeah, yep. that people have recommended. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously we're not going to put everyone on because otherwise the playlist would be. Yeah, you can only have so much on your Spotify playlist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It tells you you've got too much. Oh, mine, mine already tells me I've got too much. Yeah, I've got to okay. delete stuff all the time. So, um, but yeah, so mine this week is is Sia Aussie Girl. Yeah. Um, yeah. From Inc- Adelaide, I think maybe. Yeah, I reckon Adelaide. Yep. Yeah. Uh, incredible <laughs> singer. It's not the sort of music I would usually choose to listen to. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. There's something about it. Uh, there's probably five songs or, or so by her, by her which I'm just like, I, just, I listen to and I just shake my head and go, a, a human shouldn't be able to sing that good. Yeah. Um, and Chandelier is one of those songs. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's I'm going to nominate two, two today. So that's one, Chandelier by Sia. Yeah. Um, and the other one is Unstoppable by Sia, which yeah. it, it's a bit of a hype song, like a pump-up song. Yeah. And, like, I've got a 
I've got a uh, four-year-old daughter and she, like, whenever I hear that song, like, she even knows, like, she'll always, she'll ask me to put Unstoppable on all the time. Yeah. Um, because, it, because I've, like, I sort of introduced it to her and I've said, oh, this is your song, you know, and there's the lyrics in it are about I'm unstoppable and how strong I am and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. I'm like, that's all I want from my daughter in life is yeah. just to go through life and just be strong and, 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 kick the world's ass sort of thing. Like, yeah, yeah. like Artie, I've got a, a five-year-old boy and, and he, he's going to be fine, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. Guys have got it easy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like he'll, he'll be yeah. fine. But I just want my little girl to, to be unstoppable, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So that's it's a bit of a hype song. And in the car, the whole family will be sitting there playing Unstoppable by, <laughs> Unstoppable by Sia and we'll be screaming the lyrics and that. It's Yeah, so that that's why I'm picking it, yeah. And Sia's a legend. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, always got a back in Aussie, mate. And that's, yeah. yeah, again, Wolf Brothers like the Australian, yes. Australian boys. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, we'll get amongst them. We'll put them on there. Um, I think that just about got us uh, finished up, mate. Uh, yeah, well, so obviously, yeah, we're still still robbing the um, the office here. So, we're going to we're gonna work on that in the um, not too distant future. Yeah, we've um, got, we got a pretty handy guy around that might be able to help us out <laughs> with the so studio. What now? <laughs> 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 you already know about it. You've been, you've been running around with your tape all day, mate, really measuring stuff up. So, so we're gonna get something sorted for that. We, it'll be still obviously a fair while away, but um, but we started planning on doing that so we yeah can have everything set up and that, and uh, so we're not robbing this space all the time. Um, but the other thing is too, guys, um, we want people to uh, maybe what do you reckon record their stories? Like you, if you've got an iPhone or anything like that, you can. Um, Make a uh, voice memo. Yeah. Um, I don't a video know, but, would be ideal. Oh, video, yeah, if you can. Yeah. Um, yeah, video if you're keen. Otherwise, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it'd be better for, if it was video. Yeah. Uh, but even just uh, audio, uh, send us in your stories, like a fishing-related fishing, fishing related stories. And then um, over a period of time, we'll uh, each week we'll pick one out. And oh, just something funny came to mind then about oh, a about, about a Spanish mackerel. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, send it. Tell, tell us your tell us your fishing yarn. Ed. Tell us your fishing yarn. <laughs> I think you might know this one. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, one or two seasons back, um, we're bringing the houseboat back. Uh, Ash's houseboat. He was crabbing up uh, north of here and. Um, it's a bit of a mission to pack up shop at the end of the season and, and bring it back. So it was all weather pending and, um, yeah, pack up all the crab pots and then get the mothership back with the uh, crab boat in tow. So, yeah, it was a big convoy and um, it took quite a while. We, oh. we fluked, like, we didn't fluke the weather. You were all over it. But, um, it, yeah, all the stars aligned and, yeah, she was, she was a perfect day. But, um, yeah, she's a slow trip. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 90 odd crab pots, you know, the crab boat. And then, I don't know, what do you got on the back of that thing? 250s or something? Uh, 260s, yeah. yeah. So, but she only pokes along steady, like yeah. sort of five knots, six knots or something like full speed. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I get bored pretty quick. And, yeah, we were having a couple of beers sitting there. And then I'm sort of ratting through the place. And Ash is like, what are you doing? And I've walked past and I've, I've got. I found an old hand line that's got like whippersnipper cord on it, and <laughs> and then I'm going through this old bucket out the front, and I found this lure, and it didn't have trebles on it, and I'm changing trebles over, and anyway, I walked through the boat again, and I've gone past him out the back, and he's like just shaking his head. I've put a lure on the, on this hand line, <laughs> and he's like, "Don't get that caught round the prop. That's all that's going to happen." And, <laughs> and I'm like, "No, she'll be right, bros." <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too long, probably maybe half an hour later. I was out, I was out the front and uh, you've come out and gone, have you been checking that line? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm all over it. And he goes, well, you better go and have a look because it's floating. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and, uh, yeah, I've grabbed a hole of it and holy, it just took off. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I've got a Spanish mackerel on the hand line about a metre long. <laughs> or, well, even a little bit over oh, maybe, I, I reckon. Than that, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, she was going flat out everywhere. Yeah, so uh, ended up getting it in and uh, and got the landing net. And, yeah, I think I think you videoed the last little bit of it or oh, took a photo. I, I, got, I got some photos there, mate, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll and, uh, yeah, ended up getting it in the boat and, yeah. <laughs> proper good one <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a bit of a mission yeah. oh yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah 
Oh, um, no, that was good fun though. Yeah, coming back there, that was um, that was one of the best trips ever because it was just like one of them days, it's just w- like territory glass off. Like it was just... I wish it was like that, all those trips we did up there <laughs> through the season <laughs> when I'm up there. Man and, against uh, the sea. Every, oh, it was man against sea, just absolutely so getting like, yeah, pummeled for a couple of hours every time. <laughs> yeah. So that's and, the story we're after, right? Eh? That's a, that's the sort of story we're after, mate. Yeah, something something like that. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, if you, um, yeah, so we want people to send us in stories, uh, either video or audio. D- don't send us an email with the story because, yeah. like, yeah, we're just it's got to be you speaking about it. Tell us your yarn, and if it's, um, yeah, if it's picked that week, we might do something uh, like take turns and pick and one, you know, story of the week. We'll come up with a, a, a actual segment name for it, maybe. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, basically, so um, uh, guys from Adrenaline Outdoors um, uh, want to uh, – have basically set us up a thing. They're going to do, like, a $50 voucher. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, the story of the week, we'll, we'll get you a $50 voucher for their online store. Uh, we're, we're just going to see how it goes, see how it works with them. We've got some other stuff in the works with them. Um, I think they're the um, Australian suppliers of uh, Jabba's fishing fishing equipment. Yeah. Um, so all, all sorts of gear. I think they're like their flagship stuff is their rods though, their five-piece travel rods. Um, we did speak about it with Trent um, previously. Yeah, um, last week's podcast, yeah. Yeah, so um, so that, those guys are keen to get involved. So, um, yeah, if you've got, got a yarn, send it in and um, we'll pick a winner each week, even yep. if we take turns or something, picking a winner of the best yarn for the week. Um, yeah, we'll give you a code or whatever so you can go on their online store. They sell all sorts of stuff, you know, fishing, tackle, um, uh, rod, like I said, uh, travel rods. Um, they've got a heap of nice jigs, lures, all sorts of stuff. Yes, yeah, so we're going to start off at like uh, $50 a week or something like that. Yeah. And then, so yeah, that could either go towards a, a Jabber's rod mm-hmm. or, or you could get yourself some, some lures. Some lures. Some jigs. Or, yeah. Yep, some terminal tackle. Yeah, unreal. Yep. That sounds awesome. Oh, uh, yep. We'll get amongst that, eh? Yeah. What do you reckon? Shut it down. Shut it down, Russ. Thanks for being on it. Shut no it down, Russ. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Good on you. Champion. Oh, Good yeah. job. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Guides in the Gulf.